Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending this uh, webinar on Agile Architecture. I'm Christophe Timon, Head of Marketing at CISAM, and today our speaker is uh, Sylvain Benoit, Senior System Architect. Uh, good morning, Sylvain. Morning, Christophe. Morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to wait two more minutes uh, before getting started, so uh, people can get connected. Uh, before starting, just a reminder, whenever you want during this presentation, do not hesitate to write down uh, your question thanks to the q and uh, window. You should find the button at the bottom of the, of the page on the screen. Uh, we will gather all the questions and Sylvain uh, will answer them all at the end of the presentation during our Q&A session. And there is no stupid question, so to speak, so enjoy. Okay, let's get started. And once again, thanks for joining this 30-minute uh, webinar followed by a 15-minute Q&A session. And one word, um, one word um, about CISAM to start with. Um, CISAM is a consulting and architecture firm uh, specialized in mastering complex systems, be they industrial product, uh, information system, or enterprise transformation. And we are committed to helping our customers improve operational efficiency and secure business sustainability. You can see here on the screen that we have a range of expertise that we cover, competencies, and today we are going to focus on two of these key expertise, enterprise architecture and agile at scale. And for addressing this topic, we have one expert, Sylvain Benoit, senior architect at CISAM. Uh, Sylvain, the floor is yours. Thank you. So today we'll be talking about moving towards agile enterprise architecture, and we'll see where's the evolution or the revolution in, the, in this uh, matter. So first of all, um, a quick look at what we will uh, cover today. Um, a quick state of the union, as I call it, um, to uh, set the context and the record straight. We'll then look at a few challenges in uh, the evolution of architecture practices. Uh, and we will uh, uh, look at the uh, agile enterprise architecture mindsets, uh, which is something that is very dear to us at CISAM and complete with how to move the architecture practice forward um, in your organization. First of all, let's get rid of the elephant in the room. Agile is the norm and Agile at scale is next. Um, the 14th state of Agile report um, gives a 95% uh, um, ratio of respondents saying that the organizations practice some form of Agile development methods. When you cross this with Gartner, it appears that close to half of respondents use Agile for all or most of their application development. So that means that we've been uh, a long way from um, the early days of 2001 and the Agile Manifesto. When it comes to Agile at scale, um, Gartner again says that their respondents states that more than 60% of them have been implemented some form of uh, what they call enterprise Agile framework, which is an Agile at scale. Now, let's not get bogged down into numbers. Uh, you could say that the respondents to Gartner do not represent the entire spectrum of enterprises in the world, but still it is a, a, an important trend, I think, that sets the pace. And, and so we have to um, take Agile as a given. Now, Agile has brought a lot of benefits. That's pretty clear. But that doesn't mean that everything is going perfectly. Um, some of the customer feedbacks that we get uh, fall into some of those three categories. The first one is the um, strategic alignment or lack thereof. Um, issues that pop up when uh, 
architecture loses consistency with uh, local directions being taken by uh, a large number of different agile teams. Um, another aspect, which is that enterprise architects by the organization are sometimes confined on the IT side, uh, which I think is a shame because it goes against the very definition of enterprise architecture, uh, where you're supposed to architect the entire enterprise and not the IT systems of the enterprise. Um, so we're missing some opportunities here. Another aspect is development silos. Yes, agility is supposed to try to get rid of them, but it's the human nature. Uh, we cannot prevent development silos from popping up in just different places. So development teams risk working on silos on a limited scope and lose sight of the big picture. Uh, that often uh, brings a series of unanticipated dependencies uh, which can put at risk the overall project outcome. Now, when it comes to enterprise architecture and agile, um, I would say that the current practices may lose relevance because we have not found the new balance between um, the typical enterprise architecture um, that we produce and the emergent design coming from development teams. That often comes into a lot of rework and, and challenges to integrate developments. And so to me, the question in all of this is, have we found the right balance? I often use the analogy of the pendulum swing. It can work in many different places. Um, politicians, for example, uh, sometimes spend most of their energy on doing what their predecessors did instead of um, trying to push their country forward. If you look at architecture patterns over the last um, decades, we've moved from mainframe to cloud server to 3 tier architecture to um, microservices architecture. And development practices follow the same pattern in the sense of uh, getting the pendulum uh, in another direction. The Agile Manifesto follows that very same logic uh, and the way it expresses uh, valuing uh, certain items uh, like individual interactions instead of processes and tools. Um, Agile does deliver significant improvements, but we can do better. Because if we look at the statistics of successful projects, yes, we've made a lot of headways since uh, the uh, um, good old practices of waterfall and CMMI and whatnot. Uh, but there's still a significant improvement uh, that we can make. And customer feedback, again, shows us how quickly architecture can decay under the urgency of now, which is counterintuitive to me because the Agile Manifesto clearly says that Agile processes have to uh, promote sustainable uh, development. So there's something to work on here. Uh, the real important thing to me is that we need to bring a little bit of architecture back into the mix. Uh, and that's important to achieve what I consider, and the military would certainly agree with me on that, the winning combination, which is having a strong strategy uh, and good strategic alignment combined with tactical agility on the field. And the whole point is, how can we get uh, maximum benefits from all talents in the company, and, in, and that includes the architects. So how have those architecture practices evolved? Hmm. The feeling that we get is that too many architects seem to be left out of the agile swing, leaving them pouting on the side and wondering what their position is in the, in the enterprise. Well, I can offer a few explanations. I don't know if I have all of them, but it's just uh, an overview of what I feel is uh, some of the causes of that. Agile usually starts from the base and works its way up into the organization. So there's a very good chance that the higher you get into uh, the layers of the organization, the more time delay you're going to see in an adoption of agile practices. Maybe there's something with the agile manifesto itself. 
right? Um, the 11th principle that states that the best architectures um, come emerge from self-organizing teams may have been interpreted too literally uh, by some agilists, uh, include, concluding that after all, if it's a uh, self-organizing team, we don't need architects. I would say that architects have often been locked in ivory towers, not of, from their own doing, but by their organization's models and practices. And slowly, but surely, those years and years old of waterfall or V-cycle practices have permeated the architect's mindsets into thinking or believing that this is the way they have to operate and this is how they should behave in the company. Then we can, of course, ask ourselves, is there some kind of reluctance to change? Is there some kind of comfort in, in the way things are? Um, probably a combination of all of these. If I try to put some structure around, uh, around this and try to analyze what could be holding enterprise architects from truly adopting Agile, I see um, a series of factors. First one that we could look at is personality. Well, obviously there's not much we can do for that. Uh, it's not true just for architects, but for any kind of profile. Uh, some people have difficulty adapting to change and their personality may uh, at some point um, be a, a significant blocker uh, to um, their um, integration and maximizing their value to the enterprise. Um, so unfortunately, there are some tough decisions to be made on that point. Is it the environment? Well, yes, absolutely. And based on the number of uh, comments and feedbacks that we've heard from uh, trainees attending our um, trainings on Agile architecture, uh, you would be surprised how many people tell us that, uh, well, that's not the way the company works. That's not uh, their mandate. This is not how their managers have told them to operate. So there's a huge environmental aspect to that. What about skills, knowledge, and practices? Well, if I, if I could have some statistics, I would be very curious to see how many architects actually had trainings on agility to really understand what it's all about and how it operates. But you could say that it's, it should be easy to fix, right? Just register for a training. Well, it's more complicated than that. Again, uh, I have seen too many people coming, attending trainings and saying, well, my manager told me I had to go to this training. And when you challenge them and ask, what are you looking for? Why did you come here? You get a blank stare. And uh, it's obvious that there's some, there's some issue here, which leads us to the mindset. The mindset, which is a complicated concept to grasp somewhere in the middle between personality and knowledge and experiences um, which drives our behaviors, um, not as strongly as personality, but in a way that is much more resistant to change than uh, normal skills and practices, which you can adjust with a simple training. Which leads us to um, the following point, what should be the proper agile enterprise architecture mindset? Here at CESAM, we've come up with our own architecture manifesto. We live by it, we work and operate by it. And it's really important in uh, the way we operate because we're not just a uh, training and coaching um, firm. We are also working as consultants for clients. And in a sense, we have to eat our own dog food. So it's really important for us to be 100% uh, pertinent when we try to provide value to our customers. And so our manifesto says that we'll strive to deliver sustainable value. And there's five points. The first one is building the right solution for the right stakeholders in the right context. 
you could say it's obvious. Well, it's better to state it explicitly. Agile has done uh, a lot of good in uh, putting the customer and the user back to the center. Uh, unfortunately, some of us, many of us, um, have realized sometimes painfully that satisfying the customer is not enough in the large context of the enterprise. There's a large combination of stakeholders and building the right solution uh, is not just listening to a product owner, it is achieving uh, a, an optimal global consensus that satisfies all the stakeholders. The second point is creating alignment through collaboration. We deeply believe that architecture is, should always be collaborative in nature. It doesn't make sense on large complex systems or enterprises to imagine that a single architect can carry alone on his shoulders the burden of um, preserving or being the protector uh, of the architecture of such a large system. It is always achieved by bringing together lots of skills and talents and expertises from different parts of the firm and aligning them towards a single direction. So the architecture, the architect is much more uh, a facilitator than just uh, uh, an author in, uh, in the sense uh, that, that we imagine. Third, the th third point is about applying the lean system engineering discipline. Yes, we believe that architecture is discipline. Uh, it requires um, some rigor uh, to, uh, to be successful. Um, we deeply believe in systemics and system engineering uh, as the core foundation of our methods. We've added lean onto it uh, to signify very explicitly that system engineering is not uh, the ends, but it's a means to an end. And we have to be cautious on where we put our energy and what we are producing with system engineering. So we're not paid by the number of diagrams or views that we produce. We are paid for the value that we provide. So it's important uh, to signify that the method has to be applied lightly and taking value into, um, into context. The fourth point is about managing change in complexity. Yes, managing change, not resisting it, uh, but rather embracing it and, and uh, producing architectures which are um, easier to adjust uh, to um, include changes. Managing complexity, that also comes from the fact that we believe that architecture is some kind of universal language that we could use to target development teams as well as managers. So there's a balance in terms of complexity uh, in the way you present things, uh, in the way you synthesize things so that they can be uh, um, acceptable for um, decision makers as well as development teams. And the last point, which goes directly into the soft skills and the behavior aspect, is about acting as a servant leader for the enterprise. Um, leadership, I would say there's no question about that. The servant leadership uh, notion is slightly different. It explicitly says that the architect is at the service of the enterprise, not um, operating as a guardian of something, uh, using control and authority, um, the supposed authority of his knowledge, but more at the service um, of the company and, and the, uh, the teams working for that company. We also have a series of principles. I'll try to go a little bit faster on those principles, but they have, um, they have a, a, a very uh, simple threads from start to finish. The first point is to solve a specific problem. Um, it is very common, unfortunately, to have problems which are not correctly articulated uh, and therefore um, very difficult to solve, right? If you don't have the equations in front of you, how can you solve them? 
Second point, using simplicity and doubt, we never, never rest on the method and apply blindly. So we have to constantly question why do we need to do this and what is good for. That's all about thinking about value. Involving business and technical actors can be complicated at times, but yes, we know that it's usually a condition of success. Not doing it is usually a recipe for disaster. Being iterative, that's fully compliant with agile manifestos, I would say, um, is slightly disturbing for enterprise architects, but we believe that the more the uh, process is iterative based on a permanent questioning between stakeholders and architects, the more effective you can be because you will very quickly uh, sort out issues um, that um, can uh, really bog you down, down the chain. Fifth point is about creating preliminary models early. Uh, it's all about having simple views, which you can use uh, for decision makers, for managers, and also for development teams um, to show that the architectural approach that you're taking is credible and that you can slowly, gradually refine it. You still wanna have something that is complete and coherent and, and avoid as much as possible the accumulation of details, which are often not relevant to project objectives, especially when you have uh, a decision-making process. Um, this details don't help. And by the way, details are supposed to be left to the implementation. The whole point in the end is to translate all of this collectively into an architecture that is agile by design and that will exhibit different trade-offs on architecture qualities uh, which are more amenable and more pertinent uh, for systems that we expect to be always running and constantly evolving. So where's the revolution? Well, I didn't promise a revolution. I was asking the question of, is it an evolution of revolution? I consider that there's an evolution of practices, but when it comes to mindset, it's probably closer to a revolution. Culturally speaking, we're talking about moving to models where we have usually single authority to true collaborative ownership, and that can be disturbing. Moving from process control to outcome control, um, from sequential, a very sequential approach to parallel. And that's all about changing the mindset, which is a complicated endeavor because we're talking about um, elements which are deeply ingrained in our brains. Methods and architectures have to evolve in the way we look at uh, needs and requirements, moving to value-driven need satisfaction, um, changing, moving away from monolithic products to very loosely couple architectures and introducing the notion of platforms. Architecture roles and tools, you could argue that it's somewhere between evolution and revolution, but the first important point is about moving the role of the architects from a controller to um, still an architect producing, producing uh, uh, views, facilitating coaching, but const being constantly involved in the team's work. Moving from a central governance, which is usually a bit heavy handed to delegation federation. Again, can be complicated in some cultures and some companies. Moving also from centralized referentials to a federation of loosely connected local referentials. Some of you could say, oh, yet another manifesto we've had enough we have way too many why did you come up with another manifesto well first of all to shake things up a little bit because we can uh, and the second point that we wanted to make is getting back to basics why architecture matters and why architects should get out of the bed in the morning if you have architects in the wrong mindset then it's very unlikely that you will get them to uh, evolve their practices and in incorporate agility. I also want to step, take a step back from arguments about methods or who is theoretically right or wrong. 
um, all architecture methods, I think, um, can evolve to be agile compatible. The uh, Cezanne architecture method is uh, inherently deeply uh, agile compatible because it's been thought like this. But that's not the point. We can all have our own specialties, our own ways of doing things. What's really important is how we operate uh, and how we bring people together um, in, uh, in a common direction. The point to me is to force the hard look on what we believe is the biggest source of resistance to change and that's culture and mindset. Gartner, by the way, says exactly the same thing. The, the extensive surveys they did point out that this is the number one source of resistance to adopting agile in enterprises these days, and that's culture, development culture. But when you think about it, um, architecture culture is just a part of the overall development culture. So the question is, how do you address it? Well, there's no way you can simply uh, concentrate and expect your quick wins to work with a bunch of trainings and coaching. You have to look deep into the hard part and see how you are going to attack it and plan for it. So how do we move forward? Well, for us, there is a series of steps and levers which have to be activated in the right order. The first thing is to create the right environment. If you do not have the right environment, the mindset is worth nothing. The second part, which I think is often left out, is to change the mindset. Then, and only then, you can think about building or rebuilding the practice and always thinking about how you can deliver value in the process. And you can do that in a series of steps. First of all, you have to assess the situation, see where you are. Start with raising top management awareness. Great, that's what we're just doing right now. The second part is to understand the current mindset. Uh, understand where you are in terms of practices um, and see if there's some quick wins that you can do in the way because you never know. Second part, second phase is to scope this overall approach and get some top management approval. You might have in the process to source uh, or coach some key talents to help you in the process. Then we believe that you should draft your own manifesto collaboratively with architects. That's all about defining collectively what your new contract uh, with the architects is going to be. Uh, I believe that SAFE, for example, has gradually and slowly introduced uh, and, and answered questions on how architects insert into an agile at scale uh, environment but they have presented their values and principles as these are the safe values and principles. They probably have not wondered or their speech isn't really geared towards uh, understanding what the current mindset of, arch uh, of architects is and what it should be in the future. Once you've done this, and by the way, if you can reuse the uh, CESAM architecture manifesto, if it can be of any help, then that's perfect, great news. Um, but to me, that's not the core uh, selling point. You know, we're not here to initiate a religion or a cult around that manifesto. We believe that it's much more important to get your architects collectively in your enterprise to uh, appropriate themselves the values and principles on which they want to operate. And it's not just a uh, uh, paper that you can print out on the walls on the side, you have to be consistent with those values and principles as you operate on a daily basis and how you behave. On that basis, you can collaboratively re-architect your target practice and see how you can deploy it. Moving on, that means, again, securing and maintaining a strong support from top management. Don't ever let it go down. Coach and train some actors. Motivate the architects, explain why their mission must change 
then propose coaching and training. I don't ever want to see again another person coming through training saying, my manager told me so, um, but not being deeply convinced that this training is required. Then you have to provide intent to implement revised lean governance processes and adapt tools. And coach and train architects, I insist on providing intent because against that's the essence of agility, not being too prescriptive, focusing on individuals uh, before focusing on processes and tools. So provide intent and let the architects gradually uh, define how they want to operate. Then you can find your guinea pigs, your key projects, small enough to dare, big enough to care so that you can deploy that new architecture practice and gain good publicity. Once you've reached that point, you can hopefully sustain and evolve that practice, which will probably mean at some point adjusting the company-wide career path, roles and HR profiles of architects that you want to recruit. You also want to adjust and improve on the values and principles that you have and specifically encourage and behave in ways that are fully consistent with those values and principles. Again, this is not just a paper that you print on some wall. It has to be real. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk. Otherwise, these are not values and principles. Then finally, on your practice, you have to get into a continuous improvement uh, discipline until you can generalize the deployment uh, to a larger number of teams and, and get traction. So if I want to uh, complete that, that overall picture, I would say embrace change and identify the limiting factor. As an architect, think about your mindset. Think hard about it. What are your own values and principles and what you believe should be your values and principles and how it needs to evolve. Reach out to agile teams. Um, one of the decisions I made a few years ago was that I would consistently try as much as possible to start with how can I help, which seems a completely innocuous change, but has a profound effect on your relationship with agile teams and stakeholders because you are immediately positioning yourself, your own mind, and the people you're talking to in a mutual beneficial relationship. Reach out to your manager, challenge yourself. As a manager, think about what you look for when you recruit architects. Is it about their certifications, their practices, the tools that they're using? Probably not so much. Think also about their mindsets and think about the behaviors that you want to encourage. Think about the environment that you are creating for them uh, so that they can feel safe to evolve, improve, and, and get closer to a model where they are truly operating in Agile. And also engage them in Agile transformations. I've seen too many situations where there's an Agile transformation manager but has never reached out to architects. So all in all, it's this uh, long journey, uh, but you have to think about uh, the biggest roadblocks on the way if you want to make it a smooth ride.